What is the worst season of a good show? Season 8 of Game of Thrones. Although, it did start going downhill from season 6 onwards, season 8 was particularly bad and ruined the show's reputation. Wherein, Dexter, totally negated, obliterated the original premise of the show. Which was, in fact, quite a good premise. Season 8 of that 70s show. I try to pretend it doesn't exist. I think there should be a law that stops the CW from making any show for more than four seasons at the very most. Parks and Recreation Season 1. They restarted again in Season 2, most notably making Leslie's character less dumb and it worked well. These new fucking Spongebob seasons. Community Season 4. I think it is better than Reddit gives it credit for, but it noticeably worse than the other five seasons. The lottery-winning season of Roseanne. It made me so fucking mad, not even close to plausible. It especially infuriated that they wrote Dan Connor as a typical cheating spouse that would fall for some bimbo now that he had money after 25 plus years of being faithful to his wife and family. Get real. And then the insult that the entire series was all a story in Roseanne's mind where she had made the characters into whatever she felt told a better story than her real life, in the final episode, pissed me off beyond belief. Season 2 of Promised Neverland. It went from an interesting and thrilling story on a farm, to going through or skipping the rest of its arcs at the speed of light. Season 9 of The X-Files. Fox execs were greedy and wanted to milk that cow till the last drop. They had no show to replace that would have similar ratings, if what I've read is correct. From what I've read, even Gillian Anderson was ready to move on. I still can't believe it. The X-Files without Mulder. Personally, I liked season 8 because he was still in it half the season and they wrote around DD's absence. And the S8 ending was more than satisfactory. But no Mulder all season? What were they thinking? Season 9 of Scrubs. Just no. Every season of Heroes after the first one. The final season of House of Cards, undoubtedly, wins the prize for worst season of a good show. They could have made a great season about Claire dealing with Frank's death and legacy. But they rushed. The writing was so bad, the last two episodes felt like a cheap horror movie. That absolutely dreadful Irish arc on Sons of Anarchy. Star Trek TNG Season 1. It's not an absolute dumpster fire, but it's very rough. Season 3 onwards Prison Break. First two were insane though. Season 4 of Arrow they hyped the villain Damien Dark so much, nothing Oliver, Green Arrow, was doing could match him. And then in the end, two words hope and happiness and voila, Oliver won. That really sucked, I was so curious to know what he will do to win but power of hope, love, happiness, didn't see that coming. The seventh season of Once Upon a Time. It wasn't, bad, but it was ultimately pointless in the way that it was presented. It was practically a failed imitation and mirror of the show's first season. It wasn't as nearly as charming, magical or mysterious as the first season. It was just there and felt disjointed. Season 6 of The 100, the show was good but it went to hell after season 3. Then it just got worse and worse until they finally ended it after season 6. Bones after Temperance and Booth got together. I still like it, don't get me wrong but show lost something. What does work, but shouldn't work? If people knew how much of the software they used every day was held together at the seams by the digital equivalent of chewing gum and paper clips, there'd be widespread global panic. Placebos. Wikipedia. Four-year-olds in China. Half the code I write. Seriously, if I come back a month later, I ask myself what drunk monkey wrote this code. Then I remember it was me. Not about me but a friend has a broken camera on his iPhone 8 and when it decides to break he just slammed his phone and it seems to work just fine afterward. When the free sign fails, the $50 sign will get rid of your old couch, fridge, treadmill in a matter of minutes. I have a toy monkey that I got when I was like 3 years old. It has a little battery operated speaker box so when you squeeze it it makes an ooh ooh ah ah noise. I turned 30 last week and it still works just as it did when I got it. Asking people to do a favor for you is proven to make them like you more. Boats floating and planes flying. I understand how it works but it blows my mind that a 500 ton boat can float or a 200 ton airplane can fly. Blowing into Nintendo cartridges before you use them. They are never dusty enough for it to actually affect their performance, but somehow, you just have to blow on them if you want them to work. Electronics. I mean how can those little bits of plastic, glass and metal be made into computer chips that do amazing things? 
How do you program what seems to be little pieces of junk with keystrokes? Who figured out this would even be a possibility? I can't wrap my head around it. I am in awe. Squeezing your thumb to repress your gag reflex. Hitting the TV remote to make it work. Fake it until you make it. You think it would just lead to a bunch of posers but... If you actually learn and work on yourself so you actually do make it instead of just faking it the entire time, it works. Duct tape at fixing things other than ducts. Edit. It is in fact not for ducts at all. Also some advice and info on duct tape versus duct tape cold sweat smile. Our traffic system. The only thing that keeps it from devolving into one giant fireball of chaos is that we have all universally agreed that red means stop and green means go. Modern work culture. Nobody who does the groundwork is happy but it always gets done. Helicopters. Just look up how the fuck they even work. First time my dad took me out to practice driving, I started driving around the parking lot. We finished and dad wanted to know how in the world I started the car since he had accidentally given me the spare key without the electronics inside. 